five pieces of tape? Really? Yes, really. Today, I will teach you how to hang a television with five pieces of tape and some other stuff. Today, we hang TVs. Let's do it. Ah. Quick run through of all of the tools we'll need to pull this off. I have my drill. My battery is charging right now. Uh, I use an 18 volt drill, quarter inch socket, nut driver. I'm sorry, half inch, not quarter inch. Gloves, screwdriver, a drywall knife, a cutout template, magnetic stud finder, or you can use a regular uh, sonic stud finder is fine as well. A level, of course, the bracket. Uh, I'm using a, <clears throat> a tilt bracket. Most tilt brackets and low profile brackets will have at least these three main components. You have the wall plate and then you have the television arms or the mounting arms that go on the back of the TV. Brackets will also come with a package similar to this that has uh, the various screws that fit the television. Um, they pretty much have screws for every size TV, so you will not use all the screws in this package. Um, I've already taken out the ones for the TV that we're going to install today. These are the screws for the, um, the uh, TV mounting arms. Uh, these are the washers for these screws. And these are the lag bolts for the mounting plate to go into the studs and be mounted to the wall. Um, this has the uh, uh, washers pretty much on them. Uh, if yours doesn't have it like this, then you also need to get the washers. Obviously, you want the wires that you're going to put in the wall. I'm putting in a 10 foot or 12 foot optical cable as well as a 10 foot HDMI cable. The wall plates that I'll use to cover the holes that we make to pass the wires through the wall. These are the adapter rings. You may or may not need this. I have it because I need kind of whatever. I need to be able to be ready for all situations, but this is a, uh, a glow rod or a fish, uh, fishing rod, fish stick. They call them different things. Um, it also glows in the dark, which is why they call it a glow rod. Um, but this is, as you see, bends, it's plex, uh, fiberglass and what that does is allows me to push the wires uh, or pull the wires through the wall uh, especially when there's insulation when there's insulation it's hard for the wires to just freely fall through to the bottom and we'll also need oh, I forgot this ah, some electrical tape to tape the wires onto the glow rod uh, and also for the five strips of tape mounting method that I'll show you very soon. Okay, so this is the first step that I always go through because this particular step is gonna give us the measurements that we need to know of so that we can uh, mount the TV in the location that we're trying to put it. So you do wanna get the TV in a space that you can work with. Um, this TV was already connected and sitting on this stand, so it's very easy to work for, uh, worth it from back here. If it was in the box, you may wanna find a soft area like a bed or um, an ottoman, you know, a large ottoman, some place where you can lay the TV down flat, but some, uh, where the screen is still protected. Uh, if you don't have that, then um, Usually inside of the box, there are also styrofoam pieces um, for shipping purposes that protect the TV. You can actually pull it out, form those styrofoam pieces as a stand, and sit the TV um, vertical that way so you can work with it. <clears throat> All right, then you wanna find, uh, well, first we're gonna install the mounting arms. You wanna find the location of the mounting holes where the arms need to go. They will be in a symmetrical pattern. Um, the distance between these, the, um, these holes 
uh, either horizontally or vertically will vary per television, per manufacturer, or just the size of the TV. So the VESA, you'll see that VESA placement, whether it's 800 by 800, 600 by 600, 400 by 400, that's a measurement between um, these particular uh, mounting holes or screw holes. Um, once you identify those, um, it's very easy to find them because there, there will be no other screw holes that are uh, empty that are also symmetrical. So I have a screw here and um, you know screw up there, but there's nothing directly above related to that hole. Um, that's a, a good indicator if you found the right holes. Sometimes brand new TVs may have black caps or covers inside of the holes that you can just pull out or uh, hand screw um, out, but even then you'll still see uh, some type of pattern with those holes. All right, so now you've already found the screws that fit your television. Um, they usually go from M M4s to M8s, sometimes M2s. Um, but that's just a, a, um, a rating in diameter of the actual screw. So uh, for tilting arms, there will always be an adjust adjustment knob. That knob you wanna put on the outside so that you can essentially reach it from the outside. If you put it here, you wouldn't be able to reach it. It would be on the inside of the TV once the TV is mounted. So just have your hole there. And we're gonna put that right around there. I'm gonna move the camera just so you can see the holes a little better and kind of get an idea of what I'm what I'm doing. All right, so you have um, you have a screw hole here and here. So um, you may ask, how do you know the top and the bottom? How do you know it doesn't go like this? Uh, number one the hooks. These hooks are going to go onto the mounting plate. So obviously they would need to be uh, set like this. Also, most uh, mounting, mounting brackets have some type of screw or um, clip or clamp at the bottom. This is your earthquake protection and it's always on the bottom. It's never on the top. So wherever you see that, that's gonna be your bottom. So you got the knob outside, which means it goes on this set of screws and the mounting, I mean the earthquake screw at the bottom showing you that it goes in this direction. So once you have it lined up so that you know, okay, I can put this screw here and then I'll be able to put a screw in down there and it won't be covered up by anything. Uh, you can go ahead and start this with your, with your fingers. Just to get that in there. All right, that's in. Then you take the other screw at the bottom. Oh, my washer. Sometimes it can be tricky. Easy does it. Yours may be a lot easier than mine. Yeah. There we go. Now that's on. All right, and you wanna try to keep this straight and tighten it down. It doesn't need to be ridiculously tight. I know because you're mounting a TV on the wall, you probably think, I want everything as tight as possible so it's as strong as possible. In reality, snug is strong enough. Snug is strong enough. If, as long as there's no movement, you don't hear any wiggling, no clanking. Just if, the, if you do hear clanking, that means that there's distance between the bracket and the washer or the washer and the screw head, um, and then you want to tighten it there. But if you can do this and it's snug, trust me, uh, it's not going anywhere. Sometimes over tightening it is a bad thing. If you have a very flat television, uh, actually, let me tell you this real quick. 
um, to make sure that they are even. Obviously, you want to put them in the same place on both sides. So count down here in one, two, you're in the third space. So we're going to be in the third space over here. And then we'll go to the same corresponding hole at the bottom that we are on the other side. Uh, what I was saying about thin TVs, sometimes if um, the TV is thin and you over tighten it, you can actually push, put too much pressure on the internal components. And that could damage the TV. I actually had a client uh, out in one of the beach cities uh, we are two up, one of the beach cities, and they had a weird discoloration in a part of the television. Uh, and we found out it was because the person that installed it um, tightened the screws so tight in the back that it actually was pressing on uh, so one of the components inside or maybe a grouping of the components and altering the picture. So snug is good. And keep it straight. There we go. There we go. Nice and snug, both sides. Now that we have the arms on, we're going to um, put the mounting plate in the arms so that we can measure the distance between um, the bottom, obviously I've used this bracket before, uh, between the bottom of the bracket and the bottom of the TV. Don't worry, trust the process, you'll understand soon exactly why we do that and why it's so so important. For those of you who had a brand new TV and you got a chance to lay the TV down flat, you don't have to worry about trying to hold this up. Um, you can actually just lay it down and push the top into the grooves of the hook. And then you're going to measure the distance from here to here. Okay, that's gonna be the first measurement. You're also gonna measure well, if you need to fit it into a, um, a specific space, like some type of cubby that has been pre um, cut out and measured, um, or if it's going into an entertainment system or a credenza, anything like that where there's uh, defined edges, uh, sides or tops and bottom where the TV is gonna be mounted, then you're gonna need the measurements of all the sides so that you can make sure you're exactly in the right spot. Where we're going is a big flat wall, so we have a little more freedom. What we really need to know is the height um, and where the center is. Everything else um, will take care of itself. So uh, there is one thing I forgot, and that's my measuring tape. I should have put that in the uh, items that you need. But I was not thinking and somehow forgot about my measuring tape. So I'm gonna stop for a second and go grab that so I can get an exact measurement. I'm just screwing this up temporarily just so it holds the plate there and doesn't fall. Give me a second. Bingo, magic of television. So now that we have our measuring tape, I'm gonna get a quick measurement. Also gave you guys a better angle so you can better see what's going on. So from the bottom of the TV, looking under it to the bottom of the bracket, we have three and a half inches. Perfect. Three and a half inches, write that down, whatever your measurement was, just in case you need it. Um, that's really all we need to do here. Uh, let's go over to the wall. Okay, now it's time for the five tape, five pieces of tape method or five strips tape method. Pull out five pieces of tape. I'm using electrical tape. Um, you can use blue masking tape, painter's tape. Just not painter's tape that's thick. You'll see why. You don't want a big two inch, three inch wide uh, rolls of tape. It's gonna be much harder to be precise 
unless you plan on writing on the tape. I've seen people do that and that's fine as well. So, but the way we're gonna do it, three pieces of tape, approximately that size. All right, now I know that my center, here's where your measurements come into play. You need to find your center. My center is just around 75 inches. So, I'm gonna start there. Take one piece of tape and put it at the center. Don't push it all the way down. I'll tell you why. Just place it. Sorry that the audio changed. I can move the camera a little bit and take my mic off. Um, okay, next height, the next measurement is the height of where you want the bottom of the TV to go. So there's a TV stand here. Um, this TV stand is 30 inches. Pretty standard, most of them will be between 22 to 33 inches, um, unless it's something that's extremely tall or short. Um, but once you get that height, um, my strategy is normally six to eight inches above um, the next surface. So if it's a TV stand, if it's a bookcase, whatever, a uh, dresser in a bedroom, I try to go at least, at very minimum, uh, I try to go six inches. If there are other hindrances where I can't go that that high, um, I won't go any lower than three. After three, it just starts to look too cluttered um, and it doesn't look professional or clean. Um, so to keep the install looking clean, shoot for six inches if you can, um, unless the person, it may be like, again, it may be a master bedroom where there's picture frames uh, or candle holders, things that might breach that height that they don't want to block the TV. So if you have to move it up higher, you have to. Um, so with that being at 30 inches, I'm gonna put the bottom of the TV, oops, the next piece of tape, at 36. The reason we use, the reason we put the center piece up first is so that we can base every all our other tapes off of this. So I use the top of the tape when I'm when I'm putting the um, the measurement for the bottom of the TV. I always use the edge. So just like that, and put it right under your center tape. This one you can put flush down. Um, this one actually, the reason I said leave it up is just in case you need to move it. So visually, I know that any tape that I've pressed all the way down is set. I've measured it, it's in place. Tapes that are up mean they may need to be moved or verified for one reason or another. The reason I have this up is because there's only a short distance between the bottom of the TV and the bottom of the bracket. So I knew that most likely, you know, if we go from 36 inches, which is the bottom of the TV, to the three and a half inches that I have to the bottom of the bracket, it's gonna be right in this area. So because of that, I need to move this tape some. So I'll move it up. Actually, I'll move it down. Right around, right around there. There, now you have the bottom of the TV, the center of the TV, then you can go ahead and go your three and a half or whatever your measurement is, probably not three and a half, uh, up, mine would be at 39 and a half. We'll put that piece of tape up. If that went too fast for you, please pause it, rewind. Um, get this part right because this part is gonna ensure that your TV is exactly where you wanted it to be. Um, so now you have the bottom of the TV, which is here. We have the, we have the center of the TV, which is here. And then we have the bottom of the bracket. So when we put the bracket up, as long as we put the, the bottom of the bracket here, we know the bottom of the TV is gonna fall there. Once we lie, if we center that mounting plate along with this piece of tape, we know the TV is gonna be centered. So, so far, we have our placement down. The last two pieces of tape are for the two studs that you're going to use. Now again, I use a magnetic stud finder. For me, it's just, it's also because I do residential and commercial. A lot of commercial buildings are um, 
metal framing. So with it being metal framing, uh, a normal stud finder doesn't always work in, the, in those types of structures. So having a metal stud finder, um, which basically finds metal studs, is uh, much better. Uh, so there's one there. Uh, you're probably wondering, well, if it's not metal studs in your home, how is it still magnetic? Uh, the, the drywall or sheetrock, they use nails to um, hold it or fix it into the studs in the wall. So what this is finding is the nail. If it were commercial, I'd be able to put it anywhere along this line and it would stick because it would be metal all the way down. With it being residential, you can kind of feel it when it pulls. It's only gonna hit the screw, I mean the uh, nails. They use a lot of nails, so that helps. Um, so this being the center, that one is kind of far off, but our mounting plate is long. Your mounting plate, depending on the bracket that you chose, may be a little shorter. Um, but either way, um, this is the beginning. So uh, we want to, we're gonna find the two closest studs to our center line. The closest one to the right, the closest to the left. That's the goal. So let's see what the next one is. We have one there. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this one because that one looks like one we most likely will use. I'll come down some, I'll tell you why in a second. So when we get ready to mount the TV, I mean, sorry, mount the uh, mounting plate, we're putting it here. Remember, this is the bottom of the bracket on the bottom of the mounting plate. So you don't wanna put the tape that identifies your stud under where the mounting plate is going to be because then you're going to cover that tape up and not be able to see it. Um, because we're going low, I'm actually going to go high. Change my mind. <laughs> quick, quick adjustments. So that mounting plate is around six inches, so I'm going to go just above that. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is so that when, when I get ready to put the, t the TV up, I mean the bracket up, I'll be here. I can line up and see it from this angle. If I were putting the TV higher, like over a fireplace or over a tall dresser in a bedroom, then I may go on the bottom because it may be closer to my eye level. So I'll put that piece of tape right there. That's one stud. Try to line it up so that the middle of the tape is with the uh, stud finder or the, the, pl the point where your stud finder beeped. Uh, most Sonic stud finders do beat at the center of the stud. So always try to be as close to the center as you can so it doesn't uh, pop out. Let's go down and see if we can find our next one. There it is there. Hope you guys can still see that. So we'll take our second piece of tape and put it there. Now, I could have used this first one as well because it looks like we have a stud that's pretty much in the center and then we have two studs that are 16 inches on either side. Well, that's what the um, that's what the code is. It should be 16 inches from stud to stud. You see, that's perfect. Hope you guys can see that, 16 inches. Um, that's another way to find studs if you don't uh, have a stud finder. I'll actually do a video on that, on how to find studs with no stud finder. Um, there are plenty of ways but the way that I will show you will leave you with less holes in the wall. So uh, again, I could have used this one because our um, bracket that we have is kind of wide, um, which helps. Uh, I'm actually gonna take the bracket, take the mounting plate off, and see how close we get to both. When the TV is large, sometimes I'll use three studs just to be on the safe side. Yeah, see with this plate, we can actually cover three studs if we wanted to. Um, what I'm probably gonna do is I'm probably gonna skip this one and just go on the outsides. I don't wanna do just two here and leave this entire side empty, especially if you have a, a heavier TV. It won't fall, but it'll definitely pull and bend this side if the TV is heavy. So you want as much uh, balance as you can. And so I feel like it'll be a lot more even that way. So now that we found all of our studs, 
we'll take take this piece of tape, move it here, and there we go. This is your five strips of tape method. And now you know exactly what I've done here and I didn't try to make a funny face. You have two studs, you have your uh, bottom of the television, you have your center line, I'm oh, sorry, you have the bottom of the mounting plate, your center line, and then the bottom of the television. With these five pieces of tape, you know everything you need to know for most installs uh, on most televisions. Um, brackets will may change. Sometimes you may have a single stud bracket where the plate is very slender and skinny and can only go on one stud. This would be perfect because it does have a stud in the middle. If you only had one stud over here, nothing here and one way over here, and you had a single stud mount uh, or style bracket, uh, there'll be a whole nother process that I have to take you through. Um, so if that does come up, uh, let me know in the comments and I will definitely uh, give you information on how to uh, overcome that obstacle. I see it a lot. So um, next thing is mounting. Let's go ahead and uh, mount the bracket. So get your drill. Oh your nut driver attachment, if it's not already in, put that in. Um, I usually put mine uh, down to one, which is the highest torque, um, so that it can push or turn the, the lag bolt into the stud. Get your bracket and your level. So first thing, you wanna put the bottom of the bracket at the top of this tape, because that's where your measurement ends. You want to make sure your um, spaces for the mounting screws line up with where you have your studs marked, and then you want to check the leveling. And it's a balance of all three, because you do one and you throw off the other. All right, that looks good perfectly centered. Now, a lot of people will say to use a pencil, mark the area, which is fine. Put the mounting bracket down, uh, the mounting plate down, and then drill pilot holes into those areas so that you know you hit the stud. Um, and then after you do the pilot holes, then put the mounting plate back up and drill the lag bolts. Uh, where you put the mounting, I mean, where you put the pilot holes. Um, if you want to do it that way, please do. Take, um, <clears throat> take a pilot bit, make sure that it's a lot smaller than the lag bit, um, the lag bolt that you're gonna use. Um, I'd say maybe a quarter of the size. Um, use the same drill, find a point that lines up with the stud, drill, if you feel um, like there was tension and pressure, then you probably hit the stud. When you pull it out, sometimes you can see little wood particles uh, inside of the grooves of the drill bit that lets you know that you did hit it. Um, do that for all four so that you are confident that each one you hit a stud and then get your drill and your lag bolts and, um, and screw them in. We are not gonna do that just because to me, uh, it's a waste of time. Um, but that's only because I'm maybe a little too overly confident because I've done literally over 5,000 TVs over the past 15 years. So um, if you don't feel that confident, that's quite all right. This may be your first one. Do it in a way that makes you feel comfortable and confident. This is your home or a friend or family's home. So you want to make sure you do it right. Um, so while we're holding it here, um, I'm going to line the lag bolt up exactly um, where I feel like the middle of the stud is and drill it in. So that, I don't know if you guys, guys could hear the difference um, when it was free spinning and when it caught the stud, there's a different uh, tension in the sound and I can definitely feel that it's pulling on the stud uh, now that it's in the wall. So we're gonna just put, Take that all the way down. Batteries. Oh, the batteries. Charge. Well, 
you know we're in the stud. Because if we weren't, uh, it would be much easier. All right, now we got that one in. Oh. I'm put one on this side. Get my leveling right. All right. And I always go, I do one to the top right, and then one to the bottom left. So again, line it up. Okay, so I felt it start to push to the right. And you feel how that's, uh, you don't feel it, but uh, it easily goes in. I actually felt the stud. So I'm just to the right of the stud. So what I can do, come out, slightly turn the bolt. Again, make sure I'm still level. Let's see, and go straight in. Space here. What I'll do is loosen that up a little bit. Loosen this up a little bit. And I can slide this over. So this bolt, I can go closer to the center of the stud now that I know I was slightly to the right of the stud. Small adjustments. pulls the bracket up or down and may get your leveling slightly off. So because you have some play in that, just make sure you keep an eye on it before you tighten everything down completely. So look at that. Yeah, level. And give us a pull. Make sure there's no give. It's kind of low, but if it were higher, I would hang on it to show you how strong it is. All right, and the next thing we do, hiding the wires. So. The beautiful thing about our five piece of tape method and doing that first before we cut holes for the wiring is that we now know where not to cut. We know that we have a stud here. Um, we have a stud that's in the middle that we didn't use. And then we have another stud here. So what we can do is choose a section either between these two studs or between these two studs to run our wiring. Um, I'm gonna go with this side, uh, no particular reason. Maybe instinctively I'm going this way because most of my cabling is on this side. Actually, now that I say it, um, this television, uh, the power cable is hardwired in and usually the power cables are kind of short. And though I'm not gonna put the power cable in the wall because just for liability purposes, uh, I don't want anybody having any electrical events and blaming Alpha Tech 
uh, for telling you to put the power cable inside the wall. So as a note and a warning, uh, no power cable is permitted to be inside of the wall. Um, in 15 years, I have not heard of any is issues happening. However, I do know um, that uh, uh, pertaining to your state's housing code, uh, that could be an issue and a violation to put a, a unpermitted, permitted, a non-permitted uh, power cable or electrical cable inside of a wall. Uh, the proper way to do it is to add an electrical outlet behind the TV and have the TV plugged in directly to that uh, outlet. Um, we'll do a video on that as well um, so you can see exactly how you can move an electrical outlet from uh, the, the baseboard uh, or the lower portion of the wall um, and gain power from it and add a brand new receptacle behind the TV so that you don't have to put uh, electrical wires in the wall. Um, so, um, but for my own reasons, uh, I'm going to put the plate on this side. So we're gonna cut a hole here and then directly under it, cut a hole at the bottom. Um, the, the hole that is behind the television, your tape shows you where the bottom of the TV is. So you just wanna make sure that the hole that you cut does not go past the bottom of the TV because obviously you don't wanna see it. Uh, as it pertains to the hole at the bottom, you want to make it even with the other um, plates that you see lower on the wall. Having it even and symmetrical around the room uh, will make it look nice not only now, but when that person is moving out, they won't have an outlet that's uh, out of alignment with the rest of them um, standing out um, in a negative way. So let's go ahead and get our template. Now I need a pencil, voila. Um, okay, so got the marker, didn't have a pencil. Um, we're gonna put this right around here. I'm doing it horizontal, so just to make sure that I am above the line for the bottom of the TV. And for a single gang cutout, um, we're only gonna cut out uh, this space. Actually, I'm gonna move this over some because the TV uh, arm, the TV's gonna sit around there to be in the center. So we don't want the plate to be in the way of the, um, the mounting arms. So I'll put that there. Give it a quick trace. I'm gonna go directly under. These plates in this house, the bottom of the plate is 12 inches from the floor. So I'll go directly under that plate. Make sure you guys can see that. Okay, just to make sure. So these plates are, what did I say, 12 inches? So I put a mark at 12 inches. Then use the template, the bottom there, level it, give it a quick trace. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, if you don't have a drywall knife, um, you can also do this with um, just a regular <coughs> blade. Um, you can kind of use it to carve, to trace it out um, after you've made your, um, your outline. You can use like a box cutter or some kind of safety blade to trace it out and then punch it out. That works as well. Um, if you started to cut and hit something hard, you were jamming it in and it still wasn't doing anything, most likely there's plywood behind your drywall, uh, which I see in a lot of condos, um, mainly used for soundproofing. So if that happens, um, yeah, there's a way around that. Um, you still can get through and uh, eventually get this view, um, but there are some other steps that you may need to take. So um, let the team know if that's something that you need and uh, maybe we'll create a video around that as well. Um, but so far, we're looking good. Uh, so now, because we have um, insulation in the wall, I'm gonna use the glow stick uh, to go down. Now, if you were to start to press and then uh, heard the sound before you got all the way to the ground, so if you pushed it inside and got here and all you heard was duk, 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 like a knocking sound, then that means you have a fire block. Uh, fire blocks, you kind of don't know that they're there unless you're using the Sonic um, style uh, stud finder. Uh, it will show you most of them. And if you have run into that, again, let us know. Uh, we'll take care of you, don't worry. I've went through plenty of fire blocks, so don't, don't get nervous. This doesn't feel like there's any fire blocks. I think I went all the way to the floor so that I can go in here. I'll push the drywall to the side. I kind of know that's gonna be towards the back due to the angle. And once I find it, oh, bingo. There we go. And now we have our path for our wiring. So let's go ahead and grab the wiring. Again, I'm putting in just the optical and the HDMI. Um, I'm not gonna put in an Ethernet at this time. Um, I did offer it, but if the client does not want it, then they do not have to have it. It's purely an option. Um, so I like to stagger my cables, make sure you tape it tight so you don't start pulling and then just pull the glow rod straight off. I like to stagger. Some people put all the wires in the front. Uh, I've noticed that sometimes, if, especially if you're running like three or four HDMI, optical, um, you know, a Cat5, and you put it in one big bunch as you pull it, sometimes the uh, insulation gets bunched up and it can't make its way through. Um, so I like to keep it lean and mean. There we go, just like that. And then I give it a quick pull. All the way through. There we go, out the bottom. Go ahead and take your tape off. I know I kind of rushed through that, but biggest part is uh, just making sure that you put your the tape on tight. That's usually one mistake that I see a lot. Put the tape on tight, but not too much tape. You should only have to go around maybe three times to secure it, pulling it tight each time, and stop. You don't need a big glob of tape. It's just gonna create mess. Um, the connections for this TV are on this side, so you kinda wanna leave enough wire kinda hanging out 
to get to where the connections are. This is why you don't want to use the cables that come in the package or a lot of the cables that your cable provider or satellite provider uh, give you. <clears throat> and they're only like six foot cables and then you are left um, trying to figure out, you know, why there's only this much cable sticking out the wall at the top and the same amount at the bottom. Uh, all right, so let's take our adapter rings. I'm, what I'm doing right now is sometimes I get these, well, these particular ones, uh, you can find them at Lowe's or Home Depot. The ones that I normally get, I like a lot better. Um, I was out, so I had to go and grab some of these, but they tend to get a little stuck. So I kinda like to push the screw through them to loosen the hole up because out of, from the factory, I just found that these can be a little stiff and hard to manage. But once you get the, uh, the fatter portion of the screw um, into the clip, uh, then it tends to be a little easier to work with. All right, so I'm gonna go flat side out. So the cable's through the back. Adapter. two types of plates um, that I'm going to show you today. Uh, the first type is a basic pass-through plate, a low voltage pass-through plate. Um, it's recessed, so it's still a nice clean look. Um, this is probably the one that I use the most. Uh, I usually like the look of it, the clients like the look of it, and if they like the look of it, that's all that really matters. I am okay with that. Oh, the screws. Uh, give me a second. done for this so I'm showing you uh, kind of like this the foolproof way because as we know screw guns can be you know real powerful so you can definitely go through one of these and crack it um, and then have to stop everything you're doing and go get some something else or another one um, but if you know your screw gun I keep one close to me all the time um, because I know its power and limit and you know and its limitations. So, uh, so there's that. Push the top hole to the bottom. I'm gonna put another one of these adapters in.
So after you, if you have these same ones and you do use the same strategy of um, screwing it in like I'm doing, just to open the hole and get it more manageable, just make sure you screw it back out so that it has space to grab onto the back of the drywall. And just so you know, if I didn't say it already, you probably already figured this out from, from doing that one, but what these do is these put these clips, um, they, as you turn the screwdriver, they go up and then they come in. It, the, screw, the screw brings it in. As it brings it in, the drywall is here. It holds the back of the drywall. That's how these stay in. Pretty sure you guys, you guys already knew that since I'm telling you kind of late, but <laughs> just in case I figured I'd throw that out there. A little free info. All right, put that one in. And as you see, our template made perfect holes. Um, we don't have to force these in. They go in nice and clean. They give us space to work with. They are nice and even. This is the biggest part to things looking nice and clean. For all you new installers out there, trust me, just get some and get one. Makes a huge difference. Single gang and double gang. You shouldn't need anything more than that for, for our trade. Usually, it not, you know, electricians may use three, four, five, six gang for light switches and certain, you know, um, thought I had to sneeze. Um, certain electrical, you know, gangs or bays that they might need, but low voltage never really goes that high. <sighs> okay. Sneeze alert. All right, so the second type of um, screw we're gonna use, oh, I'm sorry, second type of plate we're gonna use, uh, this is a brush plate. And so this allows the wires to peek out through the brush, but it completely camouflages the hole itself. So a lot of people like these wires, I mean, this uh, type of plate as well. Um, I go back and forth because though I do like the look of the plate, the opening uh, on the back or you know for the wires, it's not that not that wide. So um, I have ran into um, DDI cables, uh, some VGA cables. Um, one other cable, but some types of cables that have uh, an issue getting through. Um, even some of the proprietary uh, game console cables, um, the, those used to really have a lot of a hard time with um, the Xbox cable. So, but I still wanted to show it to you so you kind of see the look of both. Also for you new installers, a dual action screwdriver like this can be your best friend at times. Um, it's not always necessary, but when it is, you'll be happy that you had it. Um, so yeah, so here's the first part of the plate. Second part is just a normal, um, normal light plate like what you would see on certain electrical outlets or even light switches and it goes right over that uh,
just as a trade secret. Vertical screws always looks clean. There you go. So both clean, both good looks. You pick, you can have your way of doing it. Um, so the wiring is done, so time to put the TV up. Okay, before we put the TV up, I just want to go over the things that we did. Um, the five tape method has allowed us to find exactly where to put the mounting plate for the television, um, where our center line is. It also showed us the perfect uh, pathway for our wiring, a place where we weren't going to hit any studs and hopefully not have any, um, any blocks in the wall. And so before you put the TV up, uh, remove all of your tape. Um, sometimes you may want to leave the center tape. Uh, just have to put it lower than where the bottom of the TV tape is going to be and then remove the rest just so after you put the TV up on the wall since as you can see the distance from um, the distance from left to right on the plate and then the distance from uh, left to right on the bracket uh, on the brackets on the TV are very different so you do have some space to move the TV from left to right um, but always make sure you take the tape off very unprofessional leave that on in the back all right, so now let's put the TV up. Last disclaimer, get someone to help you. I'm doing this because I've done a lot of them. I know what I can handle and what I can't. It's 60 inch television, it's the LCD. I know the weight. Um, I put up, sadly, a 70 inch by myself. Don't do that. So kids and adults, don't do this at home. I love it. All right, let's put it up. Check and make sure that the arms are on the wall. And they are. Voila, now we can take our cables. Actually, I won't bother you with this part. Let's just go to the finished product. you go we hung a TV using five pieces of tape and some other stuff but you get my idea the method of using five pieces of tape to figure out the studs the bottom of the bracket the bottom of the TV the center of the wall gives you the perfect blueprint on exactly where to put the television works every time I've been doing it for over a decade never fails me try it let me know how it works for you I know people are gonna tell you did an, uh, an amazing job. Now, why do we use tape and not pencils like a lot of contractors? Well, me personally, I don't want us, the Alpha team, leaving marks on everyone's wall when they move the TV or when they move, period. Now they have little pencil marks and circles and X's all over the wall that now they have to get painted by a painter. It's just, that's just too much. We're professionals, we don't do it like that. Alpha team, we do it right every single time. Also, make sure when you get done to screw in or clamp down whatever the style of the bracket that you have uh, to engage those earthquake proof locks. That's a big deal because if you are in an area that uh, is prone to earthquakes and or you have kids that are earthquakes, that TV can jump off of the bracket. Uh, I won't say easily, but it is uh, possible. Whereas with the locks on, virtually impossible um i've done this a lot of times so i do apologize if i happen to go through anything too fast and i just didn't notice it took us around an hour to do the television i've talked to people that took them six hours to put up a tv like that so maybe i did 
blow through some areas or if I did and if you're part of our alpha team contact me directly I'll either uh, break it down further in a different video or I'll hit you directly for some one-on-one -on -one to get you through uh, your particular problem because maybe you just have a very unique situation that I didn't address in the video and you need a little further uh, assistance but with that being said um, happy hunting out there don't mess up you got this you can do it trust me alpha males alpha females i believe in you to the next video take care of yourselves and your family and this world we out